Hello, I'm Sammy P. Welcome to episode 37 of my Let's Voice series for Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. This is the series where I use the excuse of practicing my voice acting to justify playing video games. And if you enjoy the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. It's a great way to help the channel. And if you don't enjoy the video, the dislike button's there. Constructive feedback is fantastic, as are all comments. Just no spoilers. Now! When we last left our heroes, we had just talked to the prince. Uh, and I realized after I finished recording the last episode that we were supposed to talk to the prince about food for the... Oh, Takeo wants to talk with me. Uh, finish the thought. Wanted to... Where was it? There it is, food for thought. Um, yeah, establish a food source for the gullet. Um... I offered to speak to, to uh, Rahuhi, but Inoi doubts it'll make a difference. So I need to do that. But it also suggests that um, Shoti would be a good uh, companion. But I think that's for we're talking to the Dawn Stars, which we'll do if the Prince does not help. Uh, but let's talk to, to Kehu. You catch Takei who glancing your way. He quickly focuses somewhere else, and uh, he quickly focuses elsewhere and smooths back his hair when he notices your attention. Um, something on your mind? <sighs> Is there anything the Watcher does not see? Takei who grins but looks quickly, but the look quickly diminishes. Ah. <sighs> We have both seen the worst of the city. How the Raparu cluster like sea rats. Takeu's hand unconsciously, unconsciously strays towards his stomach. Without Delva's row, Onikaza must work harder to deserve the trust of the Raparu. How did the stone walls and paved lanes of Nekataka divide us so? Ugh. He sighs, shaking his head. You have walked the length of Nekataka's spine. How would you serve the needs of all of these people at once? Uh. I'd start with what you have and... Well, find a better system. <laughs> a carer. A practical solution. And one open to change. Nodding to Kei, who absently tugs one of his hairs. For the moment, he, sees, he seems totally withdrawn. Finally, he snaps back into focus, regarding you with a smile, which seems both genuine and strained. I was hard-pressed to find insight like yours in Periki's overlook. I was hard-pressed to find insight like yours in Periki's overlook. Some of the tension leaves to Kehu's shoulders, and he stands a little taller than before. I have some questions. Uh, no, I don't. Never mind. Uh, I'm going to double-check. Uh, corner waves from um, the Charu to Kano. All right, let's. Kano is this one? It is. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Run faster. Run faster. Did we leave our, our birds behind? Our animals behind? <sighs> okay. Come on, guys. Gotta be better. Alright. Alright. 
<laughs> you must gather your party before venturing forth. Sorry. Lupa, sorry, Ishii. Uh, what? Oh, they're practicing. Okay. An older Mataru man stands ringed by younger Huana. Apprentices or pupils, it seems. His robes shimmer with quartz beading, and his perfume announces his presence from across the room. Yet beneath his finery, he looks like a fighter gone to seed. Disused muscles flop from his arms, and flab pads him like so many layers of silk. He looks up and notices you. Greetings! And welcome to my home. He gestures to the lavish room, puffing his broad chest out a little more. But you bring one of Haley's beloved. This, indeed, is an honor. He sucks in his paunch and flashes Pelagina an enormous, toothy smile. Pelagina tries to muster a smile, but her obvious discomfort twists the expression into a twitching grimace. What say? The handsome de what say? The handsome fish deserves no recognition. <laughs> Tales of your capers precede you. I'll have you know that mine is a respectable house. He gives to Kehu a look that would be stern if it wasn't so self-important. For what do you come to my villa? Beaming, he spreads his arms wide. Uh, nice house. Be ashamed if someone... Nudged it over the mountainside. Yo, oh, <laughs> you Rawatians have the strangest sense of humor. Ha 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 ha! He laughs loudly, but panic flickers in his eyes. I hear you have a rare Ondrite artifact. Ondrite? The Cornet of Waves. It is a conch shell. Very important to receive it is the highest honor. He nods vigorously, jiggling the loose flesh around his neck. He sounds like he's trying to convince some himself more than you. The queen gave it to me as thanks for my years of service. I was her personal bodyguard when she was a child, you know. He folds his hands over his considerable paunch. Why is the cornet of waves so special? Because it is sacred to the goddess Ondra. Everyone knows it is a privilege to have. He clasps his interlaced fingers together, his knuckles glowing white. Glances towards his apprentices. Ekera. Tekeno. Everyone knows it is a sign of favor. She snaps too. Her response is as sudden, as automatic as though Tekei... Oh. She snaps too. Her response as sudden and automatic as though Takeno had just given her an order. Ah, he gives the apprentice an appreciative nod. Uh. <laughs> I am misled if holding a shell is all it takes to earn Nagati's favor. Takeo tosses his hair and chuckles to himself. Ooh, I can use my arcana. Well, such artifacts are often imbued with powerful spells. You should take care when handling it. Oh, I keep it locked away. To see and not to touch. Kara, but your words are good warning. He glances nervously around his fine home. Generations ago, there was a similar shell. When the old city sank, Andra's faithful gathered around that corner and prayed for deliverance. He leans close, a storyteller's grin spreading across his face. An ominous sing-song creeps into his voice. But Ondra is not a goddess of mercies. Instead of lifting them from the ruin, she pulled them down with the shell and said they would rise when it did. 
She, he chuckles and leans back, clasping his hands over his generous midsection. We get it! Dude's got a belly! <laughs> that is the story, anyway. Macabre, no? His eyes twinkle with glee. Let's read his soul. Your essence slips from your body, and Decano's soul infl ah, enfold yours like a warm, oily thing. As his fears and questions seep into you, your perspective sh shifts to his. At first, you're worried this death godlike before you has been sent by the Valian debt collectors. It would be a low trick, taking advantage of your famous hospitality, but even those Valians are crafty. But then, those Valians are crafty. Perhaps if your villa were bigger, then they might know you are a man worthy of respect. At least you have the shell. You tuck it away not only for safe keep keeping, but because you are a little ashamed of it. How could such a simple, ugly thing be sacred to a god? But it was a gift from the queen, so you keep it. Your gaze strays to the wall, yes. You must knock that section down. Install a wide, grand window. Once you have the money. Ah. You retreat from Takeno's soul to find him watching you with a placid smile. So I'm guessing... I'm guessing... I could just offer him money for it. But seeing as I just spent 3,000 on training last episode, I might not have enough. But he doesn't like it, so I'm going to actually show him that I have one as well. So I'm going to show him the Cornet of Depths. Look! I have a special shell too. Aha! I see. His features fall in disappointment. I am... I am sure it was also a great honour. See, I need the Cornet of Waves. His eyes widen. But it was a gift from the Queen. It is unusual for a man of my standing to give such a thing away. Ah, uh... uh, I could. Uh, I don't want to lie to him. Look, the cornet of waves is no mere trophy. It deserves a keeper who knows its history. He blinks. But the Queen gave it to me! There is great honour in such a gift. Uh, hmm. So I want to go with religion or insight. I'm thinking insight. Uh, no, go with religion. Andra punishes those who refuse to let go. You cling to her relic, imagine what she might take instead. He blanches. Well, oh, far be it for me to offend a goddess, especially when I have much else to... Ah. Steward! He looks around at the spacious villa. His nervous expression is reflected in the mirror-smooth marble. Ah, take it with my blessing. Presents you with a large, lustrous conch shell. The surface is inscribed with symbols, and the tip is fitted with a silver mouthpiece. Ah, uh, look at it. You have such a nice house, it'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. No, what, there it is. This shark, portrayed mid-leap, has been carved from a single piece of wood. Okay. You see cracks along the surface of this battle horn, where it was carefully repaired. A wide blade is mounted here. Beneath it is engra the engraving reads, For Courage in Battle. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Alright, well. It didn't affect the quest at all. Normally it comes up with an update, but...
Whoops. Definitely told the prince about that. Alright. Um. Hey, it's a prosperous lady. I guess we just go... I do need to go to... I will actually go to the bronze... Brass? Brass Citadel. So I need to... I need to go to the Sacred Stair at some point as well. But I think... I kind of want to get um, Seraphin back and instead of Maya. So I think we'll finish the Maya stuff. I think that... Ah! Finish the... Do the stuff for the, the Rao Titans. My, look at this. Um. Okay. So I thought there was going to be a second tower here. I was like, your cannons just... Alright. It's a lot of cannons. Oh. Rautain Guard. Halt! What is your business at the Brass Citadel? Uh, I met uh, Hazanui Karu at the palace. You're the Watcher. The one who nearly caused a riot in Queen's birth. <laughs> His mouth quirks in a grin. Grand Secretary Asura wants to meet you. His office is on the lower level of the Imperial Command, up the stairs. He points to the steps. Once you're inside, go downstairs through the room on the right. What about the Hazanui? Her office is at the back of Imperial Command. She is busy organizing <clears throat> other matters. But I am sure she will grant you an audience. Ooh, excuse me. A well-dressed Valian and a young but determined guard are arguing by the gate. The Royal Deadfire Company is a trading company, is it not? And you are on Kahanga soil. You must, you cannot turn me away. Valian's words only anger the guard further. His face darkens and she grits her, and she grits her pointed teeth. The Brass Citadel and the Royal Fire Com Dead Fire Company operate under the auspice of the Ranganui of Roatai. She straightens her shoulders and crosses her forearms over her chest in a stiff salute. We answer to him, not to you, and certainly not to some tribal queen of Nekataka. Let's take a deep breath. I'm sure we can work this out. Ah. Uh. You're one of those. She crosses her arms. These Valians are always sending their spies to stoop around. I won't have it. The guard glares at the merchant even as she speaks to you. The merchant rolls her eyes. And these Rayatowns think Rayatowns think they own anything they stack two stones on top of. I'm here to conduct business, not engage petty power struggles. Oh, let the merchant pass. What? She's up to no good. I know it. Uh... <sighs> no, you just don't trust Valians. And she's right. This is no way to run a trading company post. The guard makes a frustrated sound at the back of her throat. Mm. Fine. But if you're wrong, we're going to have a talk later. She glares at you before nodding the Valian on. A classy, my friend. She doffs her hat to you before departing. Uh... The 
gunsmithery. Let's go to the gunsmithery. All right, this is the guy that they, when we asked about weapon weapon smiths, this was one of the ones they. Oh no. There he is, Uto. Man greets you with arms crossed over his chest. He has a, <clears throat> excuse me, he has a mass of scar tissue where his left eye would be, and his hands are knotted with bulging tendons. Looking for a pistol or an aquabus? Rawatai makes the finest guns in Aurora. And I make the finest guns in Rawatai. What makes your gun so special? <laughs> Craftsmanship. He holds out his knotted hands, keeping them entirely still as he speaks to you. They're covered in small burns and scars that blur the varied pigmentation of his skin. If you ask my superiors at Imperial Command, they'll tell you our main exports are saltpeter and metal. Those are just things. They're prized because of what we do with them. He reaches under the counter and presents a blunderbuss, holding it out for your inspection with his ever steady hands. It's a high quality piece. Rawatai and industry is about discipline, precision, mastery of a craft of a of a careful art those qualities guide all that we build he puts the blunderbuss away well let's see what you have dragon's dowry oh legendary Once per rest, generates a fearsome vertical sheet of flame inflicting burn damage on anyone moving through it. Alright. 10% chance for the wielder to suffer 10 burn damage on launching an attack and 20% burn damage. Blech. Does not rely on flint to, or match to spark the pan. Instead, ornate arcane symbols on the hammer. Oh. It's a rune lock instead of a flint lock. Very clever. Can you. Stable rune lock. Ha ha ha! Alright. Wow, this is a weird... Wow. Okay. What a weird gun. A lot of, like, self-harm, but... High, high damage. Oh, you got cannons. Hello. Worm tongue. Zero to four hundred. Wow. Uh, oh, rune powder, cannonballs wreathed in flame. Damn, damn. Exceptional. What are you, pistol, one-handed? Scoring hits with this weapon grants a stacking minus five recovery time with melee weapon. Oh, oh, it's a pistol designed to use. Oh, that'd be fun. Critical shot. Oh, bonus crit damage. Wow, okay. Scoring a hit. What? Oh, okay. Interesting. What an interesting weapon. I certainly have no use for it, but... That's definitely another character idea I wouldn't mind trying, is the pistol and sword, but... Uh, another time, I guess. 
so many characters, so little time. Uh, let's rush up this way. And then I think we'll probably bring the episode to a, to an end. Oh, hello. Okay. <sighs> Come to Gork 2. My punishment's over, you know? She looks away, crossing her arms carefully to hide her burned hands. Um, sorry. I, I didn't mean to upset you. I, I, I shouldn't let my anger out on you. It's not your fault I punched my captain. You punched your captain? It's as if the mere mention of the incident takes her back to it. Her face darkens with anger and a bitter snarl transforms her features. Though maybe he shouldn't have insulted my aim. Like, I don't know the difference between a smooth and rifled bore. I... She shakes her head, quietly stewing. What are you going to do now? I'm not reporting back to Wako. Wakoyo? That's for sure. I crewed on mercenary ships before this. Come to think of it, that suited me better. <laughs> she grins impishly. Still. Scramble root at heart. Still a scramble root at heart, I guess. <sighs> I've got plenty of experience. Maybe I'll see if anyone's looking for an ex expert cannoneer. I mean, I. I could use an experienced cannoneer on my crew. She looks you up and down, considering your offer. Don't take this the wrong way, but I, I only crew with captains I know, either personally or by reputation. I can vouch for the captain here. Keeps a tidy ship of misfits, but it's we're still floating. I could use some mischief. I've had a, about had it with the uptight stiffs around here anyway. I'll see you on board, captain. She crosses her forearm in salute to you and then makes a rude gesture to the rest of the district. I like her. Emni. Emini? I don't know how to pronounce that. I do think I need to get... <laughs> Might be good, good to not have Maya just because my Maya voice is so bad. All right, we'll do the Brass Citadel stuff. <sighs> Next episode. But that was episode 37. I hope you enjoyed. If you do, as always, liking, sharing, and subscribing is a fantastic way to help the channel. If you didn't like it, I mean, dislike button's right there, constructive criticism and all that. But hey, join me for episode 38, where we're going to talk to the Rawatai, I guess. They're not, I'm not particularly keen on joining them for any particular reason, but hey, more quests are good. More experience. Uh, I think that's everything. Oh, I don't know where this is going to go up. I should probably point this out, but I'm thinking of doing a second Let's Voice playing uh, the new Pathfinder Kingmaker game. I would have started it earlier, but I've been, as I said, I've been away. Uh, but it looks interesting, and so I might try and do it as a sort of like a counter uh, as well as as the this pillars one sort of like maybe alternate the release i haven't really worked out the schedule but that is something i'm looking out uh so keep an eye out for those episodes and uh, i hope you come and, and join them and enjoy those as well but uh before then we'll probably have episode 38 so come back for that and i've been semi p